Hello everyone, Brent here with Penguin Tools, aka BYOT. Thank you for joining me, and today we have a nice, fun woodworking project where we are turning a $20 piece of wood from this to this. If you want to learn how to do it, keep on watching. Let's get started. And just like any good story, it starts with a planer, right? Well, in my case, it starts with a DeWalt planer. And this thing is amazing because it can change wood from this to this in just a couple passes, which is why a planer is essential for any good woodworking shop. But also know that I borrowed this because it's quite expensive, yes. I'll leave a link in the description box below on actually how to use one of these tools, but just know that it was my first time and in all reality, it wasn't very difficult. You just need to make sure you're gauging at the right height, as well as the fact that you're not taking off too much at one pass. You want to make it nice and even. And one of the first things you want to do is make sure the gauge is correct. So as you can see in that little indicator is showing that I'm taking off a bit too much than I actually want in one pass. If you raise it up a bit, the red arrow goes down, which is in essence what I actually wanted. Also to note, there are two finish settings on this DeWalt planer, one and two. One is basically just a more smooth, even finish because it has twice the cuts per inch. Number two will allow you just to cut off more material in a shorter amount of time. It's just not gonna finish it as nice as number one. And now just like the waitress told me at the Oregon coast this weekend, you done been learned. Yeah, long story. And we're moving on. I'm actually grinding down the edges of one of the sides due to the fact that this planer can only hold 13 inch wide boards, which is why we had to cut down this piece of wood just slightly due to the fact that it's a little bit over 13 inches. Once you have everything set, go ahead and proceed with passing the material through your planer. If you're doing it right and correctly, it should look something like this. Nice, even, smooth pass all the way through and not a ton of material coming off. It should be gradual. You don't want to cut off too much at once because it's just going to jam up the machine. As you're setting up for your next pass, go ahead and give the wheel about a half turn and on to the next cut. Now, just FYI, make sure you are blowing this material out doors. I actually have this in my garage, but the dust itself is blowing outside. It does get very, very messy, and there's a lot of miscellaneous wood particles all over the place. If this was my own setup, I'd proceed to actually getting a vacuum system for it, so it's actually being collected. But because this was more of a one-off project, I did it this way. And inevitably, I made some awesome sawdust snow angels. Yeah, you don't see that every day, do ya? That's the type of high quality, serious video taking you will find here on BYOT. Now, honestly, the only reason why I purchased this piece of wood is because it had a very unique groove on one side, and I felt like it was a perfect aspect to utilize some epoxy resin wood casting. And this is something that I've been wanting to do for a while now, have not done, but I figured a nice small project like this would be best to start out. First, you have to make sure you clean up the hole as best as possible. I'm taking some melamine paneling that I had and actually putting some wax, some car wax on top of it, spreading it out, making sure there's no chance of the epoxy sticking to the surface itself. I then pin it to the melamine panel. I then cut a small piece of the melamine in order to block off the end of the board. This way I can fully guarantee there will be no epoxy spilling outward. Now, in order to make sure that there's no epoxy spilling outward, I actually fasten it to the board first and then take a bit of silicone and silicone the edges of the board. That way I know for sure my epoxy will not escape my grass, or at least my board. Now, just like any good epoxy, it's a two-part system and I'm using Ultra Glow for my epoxy needs. I first take a weighted scale and actually weigh out the two parts of the material equally. Now you can just use a measuring cup if that's all you have, but this is a very accurate, very easy way to make sure you have equal parts of each product. Then once you have both parts poured in, just stir the bejesus out of it. Yes, the bejesus. I don't know what that term is slash where it came from, but it works for this. Now this is like 700 speed over here, so it is a very quick demonstration of stirring, but just know that I stirred that for a couple minutes at least because I want to make sure that it's fully mixed thoroughly. 
Now comes time for the fun part, the color. Yes, the color. Now we are actually using three different types of coloring pigments, and I'll leave a link in the description box below on where to purchase this, but I wanted to make sure that we had a variety of color in this and more of a layering process to give it a cool effect when it all is said and done and dried. I evenly space out each specific product in three different containers and then put about a full teaspoon in each cup. I then take a strain stick and vigorously mix in the pigment into the epoxy. Now this pigment is specifically used in epoxies, which is why it doesn't clump up when you stir it, which is very important because no one likes lumpy, clogged up epoxy pigment, right? No. Now the moment of truth, actually pouring the epoxy into the wood. Now I certainly am not an expert at this. I'm sure there's a more professional pouring style that I probably should have done, but inevitably this is what I did and it worked. I did have a sizable hole on the bottom of this board. Well, to fill it, I needed to drill a couple holes in the board first and then pour more epoxy down into that hole. As the bottom cavity filled, it then proceeded to fill the grooves on the top. And once that was done and looking beautiful, I then proceeded to actually letting it fully dry. 24 hours later, I come back. Yes. Anyways. As you can see, it's fully hardened after 24 hours, and once it's fully hardened, it's time to scrape off the excess. Yes, there is a bit of excess, and I didn't want to gum up the planer with this type of epoxy, which is why I'm now using a scraper to scrape off the excess. Now, it's not very hard to scrape off the excess, but just know the fact that it does take a bit of muscle and a bit of time. So. Hopefully you don't pour too much. If you pour a little too much, it's gonna take you quite a while to try and scrape off all the excess. But luckily for us, we didn't have that much. Now that we have the majority of the excess gone, we can then start sanding. Now I start at 120 and work my way up to 240 on the wood and the epoxy. As I'm going and proceeding, just make sure you have nice fluid strokes across the wood, making sure you're going with the grain. Just like any woodworking project, the sanding portion is very important because if you don't have a nice smooth finish at this point, you're never going to. So making sure you're due diligent in your sanding technique is important. So just note to self. I mean, come on, who doesn't want a nice perfectly smooth table? Hello? As we move on to the backside portion of the table, I do want nice smooth finished edges on the sides. Now I want to leave a nice live edge look, which is why I'm just using a sanding block and sanding off the excess material, which would inevitably come off over time anyways. Now that we have the board fully sanded, I actually grab my palm sander and use high grit sandpaper, as in 2,000 to 3,000 grit sandpaper, specifically over the epoxy fill. Now this will inevitably give you a smoother, cleaner finish over the epoxy. Now the smoother finish you can give the epoxy itself, the more vibrant the colors and the more texture you're going to be able to see after you apply the finish. Now if you have all of your sanding done, you want to take a cheesecloth and really wipe this sucker down, as in making sure you're getting all the miscellaneous dust particles off the board as much as possible to make sure you have a substantially smooth finish. What does substantially smooth even mean? Hmm, interesting. And yes, as you can see, there's a lot of particles on the sides. Yeah. After that, go ahead and proceed to using some mineral spirits to making sure you wipe it off even more thoroughly just to get the last little bit of dust particles. You'll be surprised to see how much is actually still left even after you used your cheesecloth. Now that we have that done, it is on to finishing. Yes, the finishing portion. And we are using General Finish's high performance water-based satin finish, yes. I'm specifically utilizing a water-based finish for this project because one, it's very durable and yet you can apply multiple coats later on if it does become damaged, as well as the fact that I'm going to be placing this inside the house pretty quickly and I don't want it to degas inside the house and inevitably water-based finishes do have low odor than oil-based. 
Now I'm applying this finish with a foam brush, which is great just due to the fact that they are very cheap as well as very effective tools when applying finish. I'm applying the finish to the bottom side first, then flipping it over and applying it to the top portion. However, when utilizing a foam brush, it tends to slow things down sometimes, especially when working with an, a water-based finish, which inevitably is why I changed over to a foam roller at a certain point. When you have a larger square footage area, these types of rollers will make the job a lot quicker. Now once you have applied your finish to the entirety of the board itself, go ahead and let it dry. And again, the beauty of a water-based finish is it dries very quickly. The instructions say that it takes up to two to four hours to fully dry based upon temperature and the humidity, which inevitably I waited on. And once I did, I took a same piece of the 2000 grit sandpaper and sanded very softly the entire top surface of the board itself. Once I did that, I then took some mineral spirits and wiped off any of the dust particles. And then after that was dry, I then applied my second layer of finish. I proceeded with following the same steps over again to making sure that I have at least three coats of finish on the board to give it proper protection for years to come. Now as we wait for that to dry, let's go ahead and check out our leg choice. Now we actually purchased 16 inch hairpin legs by Industrial by Design and you can actually purchase these on Amazon which is perfect and they are very high quality steel support leg that has a beautiful black powder coat finish. As you position the legs onto the board, number one, I just want to make sure that the board when it sits down is actually flat which is very important because who wants a wobbly bench? I strike a line on the bench, making sure that both legs line up properly. I then pre-drill my holes just to make sure I don't crack the wood, as well as sink my screws into the board, fastening the legs together. Now all I have to do is flip it over and take it for a test drive. Oh yeah! Now look at that mighty fine, beautiful looking wood bench. Oh yes, I must say that is one beautiful, sexy beast of a poxy live edge bench. Yep, that's what I said. We're going with it. Yeah, I'm not even mad, that's, that's amazing. And there you have it, episode number 43 of BIT done. This is really my first time working with epoxy and wood together, yes. And in all honesty, I think it turned out pretty well, and many more, I'm sure, to come in the future. But in any case, thank you for watching. Please like the video, please subscribe to this channel, and please check out my Instagram feed. I post there weekly. In any case, thank you for your time, and catch you next time. When you build such a nice, beautiful bench like this, you have to test it out, right? Yeah. Fully test it out. I'll tell my wife that.